What's up, everybody? It's your favorite murder hornet victim's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the transform element. It says OP leader on the box still. Then it says TEO2. It's their Bumblebee. From the Bumblebee film, it's on loan to me from Max. Shout out to Max. He left me a couple things that we're going to be looking at. I'm not sure in what order, but you might hear his name a few times on this channel in the upcoming weeks. There's some interesting things about this. I'm going to be honest with you straight away. I'm not crazy about it. Let me tell you why. But in order to do so, we got to start with accessories. He comes with this sort of cannon on uh, with the black paint added to the end. It's like singe marks. It's a little heavy handed, so it looks a little unnatural. Um, it is sprayed up on the yellow, though, so that part looks good. The silver looks good, and then it has the kind of light up feature. The batteries were already installed, as far as I know. And I'll show you how this plugs in. And that just pegs in under his arm with two pegs, one at the forearm and one at the hand, like an MP and then his hand sort of sits alongside of it, which is fine, I guess. He comes with two forearm swords, lots of sculpted detail. Looks like there's a wash on this silver paint down here and then silver paint here, silver accents, looks really sharp. And that just plugs right into the forearm. Now the other one that's like that one plugs in the same way, but the blade design is a little different. It's also unfinished on this side, which is a little bit of an eyesore, but painted the same way, a little bit of a different sculpt. Uh, still sharp looking from this angle. Sharp looking. Yeah, me. He also comes with the alternate battle mask. It has the silver painted details on the accents as well as the kind of honeycomb eye piece. It looks really good. I'll show you how it works. Now to install that, this piece comes up, you take out the old and then you install the new and then you close this bit back down. And I gotta tell you, it's not easy to get this back up. It's a, it's a pain. I'm gonna leave the battle mask on for the transformation because when he sent it to me, he had it on when it was transformed. So I'm not exactly sure if he would prefer it. I don't know what, so I'm just gonna leave it on. Leave things as I find them is the goal. So let's talk about the figure, the head. It's on a ball peg. Actually, it's a double ball peg, um, which I do like, but we have silver paint on the face. We had the metallic blue eyes, tons of sculpt work tight silver paint around there, silver paint below the ears, no issues whatsoever. Range-wise, you get down to there, up to there, you get a swivel, confused dog look, etc. Tons of sculpted detail along the uh, collarbone shoulder area as well. No issues. Moving on to the shoulders, look at that. More sculpted detail, more paint around the joint like holder. It's a universal joint. You, this shoulder pad moves. The shoulder pads connect to the arm. All smart choices so far. You can get the shoulder up past 90 degrees, maybe a little bit more if I rotate this. Yep, you can rotate that down, get a little bit more, so no issues there. You get a forward butterfly joint, so that's nice. Ugh. More silver paint trim work, so to speak, around the side there. More silver paint and sculpted details there. No issues. We have a bicep swivel. A single hinged elbow. Silver pins, uh, silver pins, silver paint down here. We have a wrist with yellow paint added, which looks good, and you know yellow is tricky. With a wrist swivel and hinge, so that's nice. Fingers are individually articulated at the base knuckle and a secondary knuckle. The thumb is on a swivel that'll go around and then one uh, additional knuckle to go down. All right, articulations are the same for the other side. We have a waist swivel. It does start to bang up against the thigh pieces here. Um, I feel like that's been an issue with other ones as well, but I can't recall. Uh, more sculpted detail comes through in the abdomen, more paint as well. No issues. I'm not exactly sure where these are supposed to go. I should also say, like, I'll probably say it a thousand times, <laughs> probably as a disclaimer. But um, there's no instructions in here, so I think these just sit in the back. You could have them plug in here. I don't know. Whatever you like, I suppose. Anyway, more silver detail work comes through that also comes with the... I think the yellow might be painted as well. If not, it's like that glossy plastic, but it looks like paint. If it's not paint, it definitely fooled me. Because it looks good. Uh, it looks like Takara in that regard. Actually, a lot of this feels like Takara as well. Um, and I don't, I don't necessarily mean that in a complimentary way. 
<laughs> All right, more sculpted details in the pelvis with the extra silver added on. We have universal joints for hips. Ugh. Once again, there's like a clearance issue here. Clearance is another thing you're going to hear throughout this review, I'm sure. But you can get out to there, which is fine. However, when you start to rotate the waist, it starts to limit the articulation. So there's, there's issues there. Forward, no problem. Back, no problem. Silver paint comes through. Tons of sculpted detail comes through. No issues there. The knee is a single hinge, I think. And it gets you just shy of 90 degrees. So not great. Once again, the knee looks great with uh, deco and the silver looks good. Silver here, sculpted detail throughout, beautifully sculpted. No doubt about it. Ankle, no real ankle tilt up. I mean, uh, down rather, but you do get a good ankle tilt up. And you do get a rocker as well. And then the toe has a, an additional hinge on it. So you get a toe tilt down and a little bit up too if you need it. So like you could have the ankle tilt up and then the toe tilt up a bit might need it for a pose or whatever that seems to work sculpted detail comes through you know it's got a little bit of that going on in the back there it is from the back so it's pretty clean so i know what you're thinking well like it seems pretty positive and and it is the the, the problems that plague this thing um we started to kind of hint at uh, they're going to come uh, more into your face so to speak uh, a, a bit here soon it's but it's clearance and it's build. Let me show you. But first, size comparisons. Size comparison wise, there he is with the Magic Square Prime and MP Car and the MPB. So hopefully that gives you some idea where he fits in. It's far smaller than the Zeta one, but I'm not sure what size he should be, honestly. So maybe this is right. I mean, it makes sense for this to be right, I guess, when you compare it to the smoke screen. I don't know. Hopefully it gives you an idea if you're interested in it. So let's get him transformed. Open up this, we'll get this backpack going first. Open this up, this up, and untab that. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and do the waist swivel as well, just to get that out of the way. I'm not sure if it's the best way to do it. There's no instructions here. Uh, he, I don't know if it didn't come with any or he didn't pack them in, but whatever the case may be. The only issue with this step is once you have this done now, he's going to be uh, a little bit of a, of a loosey goose uh, for the rest of the thing, but that's all right. We gotta get him sorted. All right, so let's start working on the arms. Unplug the shoulder and bring this piece up here. And then you got to pretty much force it down. That one went real smooth for whatever reason, but you'll see I'll have problems at some point. I, I promise you. Move that to the back. You can plug that in and you can move this around to the front. Let's get this shoulder sorted. So bring this shoulder pad down and then maneuver it to the front. You can untab the shoulder here that like we talked about for the butterfly joint. And then this whole section comes up and you got to pretty much force because there's not enough room oh good grief you got to force that underneath but i am pretty sure you can put that down in place now and maneuver that back up to the front push your tires out from this middle cavity here Ugh, around to the back i, I ooh. oh this just pegs in Oh, thank God. All right. I'll get it. Hope I didn't lose it. I'll get it. All right. So tires out. And then we have all of this. So uh, untab this. And these are on sliders here. So get them out to the side. Then you got to get them out from around. And then you can lift this up and this has to go inside there, right? And then all of this spins 180. And then bring these down because they're on hinges as well. Oh, and you see, you see this bar is moving out on mine. Oh, 
so that's not good. But, so I'm gonna have to take a little bit more care. But, um, there you go. And just do the same on this side. And then you can kind of line up your fender here as well. So let's get started on the legs. Bring this foot out, flip your heel spur up, flip this piece out, extend this section, and you want to maneuver this around so that it starts to form the kind of back end of the vehicle. That should be somewhat obvious. You might need to leave a little bit of space so that you can get, if you look on this other side, there's this section here. Bring that around. And I uh, may have just screwed myself. There we go. So that you can form. Ah, come on. The fender, and I just realized you could barely see any of that. So on the other side here, flip the foot down. We'll get to show it again, right? Flip the foot down so that you can get the clearance to move this up and then put the foot in this little cavity there. So let's do that again. Flip the heel up, flip this little side piece out, and let's see what else. You gotta bring this down and around. You gotta untab this start to unfold that bring the f this fender piece here out and around to the opposite side and then you can start to kind of form uh the the fender that'll give you an idea of where everything goes bring the foot down 90 degrees so that you can spin it up and then tuck the foot in and now you've got the other one done and then you can tab the legs together and they're mainly down here at the bottom so just line her up and then kind of connect them up through the top and then you got to kind of rock his hips back and then move the front kind of hood section into its proper place. You have to get the shoulders inside to this cubby here, but you have to kind of bend them around these pieces of plastic. Now these do move, uh, but you'll see. And that, we're also trying to peg this piece in as well from the shoulders. So I'm gonna peg in, so to speak. I'm gonna try to just move that as far as I can there and then we got to bring this back up and we're going to do it on this side as well just lay it down and then peg this in as well and then collapse the shoulders in towards the center open up your panels here on the side of the arm one panel underneath and then one panel on the side and bring them down and then just kind of get them as straight as you can and just lay them back towards the back of the vehicle. And what keeps it secured is these panels here uh, for the rear fender. And I'm sorry, you probably couldn't see that. Do it on this side as well. And I'll clean up between the steps. There's a lot of like finishing off tabs of this thing. So just do the best you can. There's one, there's the other. Okay, flip your wheel out in your window up and then this is the part that I kind of find a little troublesome you got to get this bar here up underneath and we'll kind of clean up a lot of these tabs uh, after we get everything sort of situated same for this side wheel down bring you gotta get it up underneath and I'll be honest with you it does feel like I'm putting a little bit of stress on stuff um, but yeah, this, that, just get the general shape. And then you just want to kind of tighten up some of this stuff, get it all kind of together and bring down your front bit there. I'll clean it up. We'll take a look at it. And there it is. And I think it looks pretty good. I think this yellow color comes through nicely. 
I think that like there's a couple places where the, the yellows don't quite line up, but it's not that big of an eye store. Tons of silver details come through, little small silver line work, you know, around the edges here and here, the handle, the mirror, the footstep there, like around the headlights, the bumper, the red translucent for the brake lights. I think it all kind of works, clear translucent for the headlights. You know, I don't, I, I mean, I think it's pretty solid, man. I think they did a pretty nice job overall you know i mean what i mean it's a it's it's a little bug i mean obviously you see all the bits in there inside the window but i don't think that's the biggest deal in the world it's a transformer right it's kind of the same thing as the panel lines like you're gonna have them because it has to transform it has to do all this stuff but more importantly tiger tracks all right let's talk about the negatives it mainly comes down to two things one is clearance the other is build you find yourself having to pull things away from the pin joints in order to get things to move past each other because a lot of the material feels a bit thinner very similar to what the car is using these days it doesn't make you feel comfortable when you're making those movements that's the material issue the other issue is build there's those pins at the front chest thing that start sliding out as you're manipulating the chest that's a problem i had another pin and the ankle fall out during the review that's a problem you saw that the ear and the battle mask falls off that's a problem like there's just a lot of that i get that the movie stuff can get complicated in terms of design but little things like making sure a pin is tolerance properly isn't a part of that i should also add that in terms of clearance it's not just for the transformation but also for some of the articulation points there's proportion issues regarding kind of how stout he is if the abdomen was a little bit more elongated it would allow you to move the hips and waist a lot smoother and add for a much more enjoyable experience. There are positives though, and I'm sure you guys know what I'm going for, but for one, the deco is absolutely beautiful, stunning. They definitely took their time. They definitely put passion into it. They definitely put love and care into it, no doubt about it. The other thing that I'm really amazed with is the sculpt. There's sculpted detail all over this thing. There's sculpted detail in places that you don't need sculpted detail. Like they just sculpted every corner, nook, and cranny of this thing that they could. That's pride, I'm always going to respond to that. The arms are articulated fairly well. The rest of the figure, kind of average at best or less than. There's weight and die cast in the figure, which does feel good while manipulating it, so to speak. The alt mode, I think, is pretty much perfect. So it's really a mixed bag. I, I don't feel comfortable really recommending it due to the build issues, but it might be one of those things where like the second release or the third release may have fixed them. But yeah, I just don't feel comfortable putting my name on it or my stamp on it rather. But there are good things about it. And with that being said, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Take care.